Hey, welcome back to the channel. Alan here with DustyHikers.com. Today I'm going to talk about a shoe that a lot of people characterize as a budget hiking shoe. But is the Merrill Moab 3 actually just a budget hiking shoe or is it a proper hiking shoe that stands up against the competition from other really, really good hiking shoes. If you're not new to the channel, you know that every year I buy a bunch of hiking shoes and then I test those hiking shoes against each other and pick the one that I think is the best. And then I share that information with you all. So this year I included the Merrill Moab 3 in that round of testing. It was by far the cheapest shoe that I purchased coming in at about $100. The other shoes were at least 50, 60, 70, even $80 more expensive than this shoe. And so my question is, is this hundred dollar hiking platform as good as those. The Merrill Moab 3 is a shoe that I've been interested in testing for a long time. Um, in the last two years that I've done this, it was a Merrill shoe that actually wound up taking first place. And so I was excited to see how the flagship of Merrill would stand up against some other comparable shoes. As in years past this year, I focused on basically four different categories, traction, protection, stability, and comfort. Um, and so I'm gonna go over the test results with you right now and then talk about this shoe and what it brings to the table and what maybe it could do better. Obviously, one of the big selling points of the shoe is the low cost. It's only about $100 and probably in the future, this price will come down even more. And I would say that is worth looking at this shoe just for the price because you could spend uh, $80 more and get something that might even just be comparable to this. Another thing I really like about this shoe is that it has all of the features that you would expect in a modern low hiking shoe like this. It does fairly well for comfort. It's got a nice midsole. It's got a nice insole in it. And so um, it's a shoe that you're going to feel comfortable in walking for quite a long distance. I also like the uppers with the, the so they mix the suede mesh, they, they mix the suede straps with a mesh underlay. And so it's a shoe that's gonna feel fine probably hiking most of the year. It might be a little bit hot in the summer, but, um, and then probably be too cold in the winter. But for the most part, I think the design in the shoe is gonna satisfy a, a lot of people. Another thing that I like is that it's fairly forgiving uh, last or the, the type of foot that is designed to fit in the shoe. I think a lot of people are gonna be able to wear this shoe. It has a Vibram outsole. It's called the Vibram TC5 Plus. It's an outsole that kind of tries to do everything. And so consequently, it doesn't do anything extremely well. But again, um, for $100, it's, it's gonna work for most people in most hiking scenarios. Just a couple things that I did not like about this shoe. Uh, one is that because it is quite wide, when you cinch down the shoe, like I have to, you do get some kind of buckling here in, on top of the front of the foot. Another thing that I didn't really like is the laces are, I, I feel like are just too thick. Um, and then also the gusseted tongue, when you, when you cinch it down up here, there's some like wrinkles that will sort of form around the, the tongue area. I have a pretty no normal foot, so I think that this shoe runs pretty wide, given the fact that I have to cinch it down so much. Okay, so how does this shoe compare to the other shoes on stability, traction, protection, and comfort? <clears throat> so for stability, uh, with all of the shoes, I hiked about 30 miles in the shoes here in Tuscany. And, and then I just, for stability, I just kind of took notes on how the shoe performs hiking on flat, even ground, and also kind of scampering off trail and seeing how it performs when you're going over uneven terrain, whether the shoe kind of has a tendency to kind of torque on you, which for me means that my heel might kind of be partially slipping out of the back of the, sh of the shoe. This shoe of the five shoes that I tested, it got fourth place for stability. Again, that doesn't mean that it's horrible at stability. It just means that there were three other shoes that I tested that, that performed better at stability. And so if you want to find out what shoe actually won my competition this year, go and check out the video. It's on my channel and um, that's probably sh the shoe that if you want to spend about $50 more, that's a shoe that I would get. Merrill's design choice for stability is this thing called Merrill Air Cushion, which is kind of supposed to be a thing for comfort and also for stability. Again, I don't think that uh, for $100 you're going to be disappointed, but again, there are shoes that are more st stable. The next thing that I did in testing was traction. So for traction, again, it was just time spent on trail taking notes, comparing the shoe to the other shoes. But I also put, I did a test, a head-to-head -head test where I did 10 iterations of this or permutations where I put a one shoe on one foot and then a different shoe on the other. And then I scampered up the steep hill that was dirt and debris and then just tried to feel which shoe gave me more purchase and more traction as I'm trying to claw my way up this hill. Um, the Merrells didn't do too bad. 
they basically tied for third place with two other shoes. So there were two shoes that actually performed much better on traction than this shoe. Again, if you wanna figure out which shoes those are, go and check out that video where I test all five shoes and then pick the winner. Um, it's like best hiking shoes of, of the year. Hey, you're already halfway through this video and so you've outperformed most people that come to this video. If you wanna help my channel out, if you're finding something interesting, the best thing that you could do for me right now is to hit subscribe. It takes you like one second. I am so close to a thousand subscribers, I can taste it. The other thing that you could do is just hit like on the video. If you're finding something useful, leave a comment down below. Did you, did you buy the Merrill Moab 3? And if you did, did you like it? Uh, do you think it's worth $100? Maybe it's not even worth $100, or maybe, it's, uh, maybe it is just a budget hiking shoe, and if you're really serious about hiking, you should buy something else. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Finally, I have this shoe uh, linked in the description, so if you wanna check out the pricing, that's another way that you could help my channel is to go and get it. I purchase all of these shoes with my own money and do all of this testing for you. So if you wanna give something back to me, that would be a way to do that. Finally, I have a blog, dustyhikers.com, so if you wanna go check out more information on the shoe and other shoes that I've tested, you can go check that as, uh, as well. Okay, next up for protection. Again, this, this Vibram sole kind of tries to do it all, which means that it doesn't do anything extremely well. I would say that it is very, very flexible, um, which for me is I, I prefer flexible over super rigid in a hiking platform. But for protection, what I did was again, hiking in the shoe and I just felt like whether you know, this shoe was gonna be good enough in the uppers to provide enough protection. It, it does have a very nice toe cap um, that's semi-soft, but it's quite thick. Um, and then finally, the other thing that I did for protection was I did another round of head-to-head -to -head -to -head testing where I put one shoe on each foot and then I stepped on a stone to see which shoe transferred less of the shape of that stone to the bottom of my foot. These shoes performed okay, I would say in general, but they did lose to all four other shoes. And again, I think that's just a function of the fact that this Vibram sole is quite soft and it also doesn't, I don't think it has as much of a stack as the other shoes did. So again, the shoe's gonna work for a lot of people. I'm not saying that it is not providing enough protection, but there are shoes out there that in my estimation provide better protection, especially for protection underfoot. Okay, final uh, category is comfort and weight. Uh, these shoes are quite comfortable. So for $100, you're gonna get a very, very uh, comfortable hiking platform. I would say, you know, if you're just a day hiker or just interested in getting into hiking and you want something other than your sneakers, I think this would be a great way to go. If I were going on a five day backpacking trip, this would not be the shoe, the shoe that I would choose just for everything that I've stated before. It's not the most stable. It doesn't provide um, enough protection underfoot for me, especially if you're carrying a backpack and um, it doesn't have amazing traction. All of the padding and stuff that they've added into the upper really uh, adds a lot of weight. So this shoe comes in at 17.56 ounces or just over a pound, uh, which is fine. Uh, but there are other shoes that I tested that perform better than this and that are significantly lighter. Uh, but again, it's only $100. So the, the quality to price ratio is, is very, very good. <clears throat> okay, final thoughts. Um, this shoe has a lot of recycled material in it, which is something that I really appreciate from Merrill. So the laces, this mesh here and also the webbing on the inside is all 100% recycled material. So hats off to you, Meryl. Um, and I'm so glad that you're doing this. Continue to do this. And I think that will be a great thing for the, for the hiking footwear industry if other <laughs> companies follow your lead. All right, that's it for the Meryl Moab 3. Again, I think this is a great shoe given its price, uh, but there are other shoes out there that perform better. I will see you guys in the next one.